Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'm going to play another training game. My opponent just played e4. Sorry for not uh, having started recording already, but I was waiting for a game for a long time. Okay, we have a Karo Khan. Uh, we will see what we get on the board. Okay, just let me see if everything's okay with the video. Let me adjust this. Uh, okay, I'm gonna play bishop g4 because that's what I usually play. And I like lines with h3. Uh, now I've played both bishop h5 and bishop f3, but in this game I'm going to just play bishop f3, which is the safer option. In those other lines your king ends up on f7. Okay, d3 is the safe move, uh, unless white plays uh, bishop to d2 and castles queenside and g4 h4, which is very scary. We will see if he plays bishop d2, that's a sign of trouble. Yeah, uh, I don't like this. So now the line goes knight f6, castles queenside. I think bishop d6 or bishop b4, uh, g4, h6. I think that's the line. So castles queenside, I think bishop b4 immediately is correct. I've played this in one tournament game and I Okay, he plays g4 straight away. Now h6, castles, queenside, bishop b4 is still the same thing. This is the most aggressive way to play the two knights. And as I said, I, I played it against, I think my opponent was Italian. It was in, in the Arco tournament 2021. Uh, so last year, and he was 2200. I'm pretty sure Luciani. I think it was Carlo Luciani. Although I'm not sure. You can find the game uh, in the in the playlist. Uh, bishop to g2. Bishop g2. I will concentrate on the game now. So he cannot play e5 for the moment. He could take uh, ED, but after CD, I have the C file. I could already choose to trade off uh, the bishops and then close the position with E5. So for example, D5, Knight E2, Bishop D2, Rook D2, E5. In which case he'd have to play something like queen to e3 and try to play f4 but i could try to play f uh, g5 i don't know if that's correct but i think bishop g2 is imprecise and this may be the way to punish it so d4 knight d2 d4 knight e2 bishop d2 rook d2 e5 I don't want to play g5, as I said, preventing f4, because then he has h4. And I'm also not sure I want to play d4 at all. I could try queen a5, uh, but after a3, bishop a3, b a3, queen a3 check, king to b1, I don't see enough of an advantage. I could try castle and king side, but <clears throat> and that should be normal, I feel. And I could also try playing for a5, a4. And that's what I like the most. a5, just preparing a queen side attack. I know I'm taking away a square from my queen. But I'm not committing to the center just yet. I don't want my pawns on e5 and d4, so I'll just continue an attack this way. Or start an attack this way. Now if he voluntarily moves the knight, uh, then I can move my bishop back or I can just play b5. I hope everything is okay with the sound. Uh, please do let me know because it seemed sort of silent when I started recording. Okay, so he's just going for an attack of his own. Uh, so if g5 takes, takes, rook takes, rook takes. 
I don't really want to allow that. So maybe I can play a safe move like g6. Why is this arrow here? Or maybe I can just win a pawn now. Doesn't knight e5 just win a pawn? Well, let's calculate. Knight e5, queen e2, knight g4, f3. Yeah, I think it just wins a pawn. I don't see a problem with it. Hmm. So takes f3. Okay. I need to play bishop d6 first. But he can play bishop f4. Well, I could throw in bishop c3, and he has to take with the b pawn. Okay, he has to take with the b pawn, because if he takes with the bishop, uh, then I can play knight takes. And now on f3, Oh, but he doesn't play f3, he plays... He plays d4. I was only calculating f3. <clears throat> so I was thinking knight e g4, f3, and of course knight e3. But on... Not, not d4, e5, but on knight... Uh, e g4 he plays mm. e5 okay so i guess i'm forced to play d4 that gives up a pawn but i don't see any other option i can retreat my knight once again I mean, I guess I have to retreat my knight, otherwise I just plunder material. If d4, queen e5, dc3, okay, I can go d4. I don't, I just don't want to retreat. Queen e5, dc3, if bc3, then knight g4, queen g7, rook f8, let's say. No, 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 no. I don't have knight g4. I am losing a pawn, but at least I'm not retreating. And at least I'm opening up some lines. And I'm getting rid of this very strong bishop. Bishop takes c3 was just stupid, missing that he can play e5 instead of f3. Okay, now what?
I'll just try to castle queenside. Castling kingside seems very scary. And my position is probably losing because I gave up a pawn for nothing. Knight e5 was just a blunder because I didn't see anything basically. But I will still try to complicate it. I'm gonna try castle's queen side and putting pressure on on his stuff. Now knight g4, queen g7, castle's queen side, queen g4, rook hg8. He has to play queen f3 or something. Is not good. But it could be in the future. At least now I'm preventing g5, I think. g5, queen f2, gf6, g5, queen f2, gf6, queen g2, fg7, queen g7, queen g7, I lose, so I cannot do that, uh, so I need to play knight h5, I don't think I have any other option, knight h5, and if if g h6 then rook h6 and if bishop f3 <coughs> then knight f4 queen g7 castles queen side I think I can get away with that. My position is dreadful, but I have to play knight f4. He plays queen g7, I castle queen side. I don't see anything else for me to do. This is just dreadful. <laughs> My position is so bad that I want to resign immediately. I'm going to be three pawns down for absolutely nothing. But I'm playing like I do have something. I'm trying to bluff my opponent somehow. Yeah, I'm just going to resign. It might already be disrespectful at this point to, to continue playing. Okay, let, let's play a couple of more moves. At least I'm still... I'm not losing my knight yet. At least I... If I get to play e5, then my knight is defended. I mean, it's it's a messy position. Of course, I'm losing because I'm two pawns down, but it's still messy. I want to go e5, rook d4, if my rook on h8 is not hanging. Or e5, rook d6. Again, if my rook is not hanging. And he is, from a practical perspective, doing the correct thing of not rushing when you're winning, which is what I like about his play right now. He probably has 20 different ways to win. And all I can do is try and swindle him. But I'm gonna keep trying. <laughs> And by the way, during tournament games, when I get a losing position, 
uh, when you get a losing position, there are those people who always try to complicate and who you're afraid of. You know that they're going to come up with something that's going to ruin your day and you're going to blunder the game away. And there are just players who do that. And then there are players like me. And what I feel after I get the losing position is, okay, I'm just lost. There are no tricks, blah, 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 blah. I wish I could become one of those people that just... play and complicate things until they find a win. Okay, uh, what does my opponent want to do? Do I have any knight d3 check tricks? No, I don't. Do I really want to play e5? It does restrict the queen. It also does allow bishop g4 check and queen f5 check but my knight is stable and if on e5 he takes on h6 threatening a rook to g7 there is absolutely nothing i can do about it I don't even see how to complicate this. I think I have to shut the position down like this. I, I don't see... If he plays rook g7, then I just lose. This way at least I'm preventing rook g4. And I'm preventing b takes... Uh, uh, excuse me, g takes h6 and rook to g7. And I still have some knight d3 ideas. As long as this knight stays here, there could be something. Or rook d3, whatever, if, if my rook on h8 is not hanging, which I can well move now because... Uh, okay, now I should play e5. Now e5 makes sense, now that I've prevented everything. I think I'm gonna go e5. I mean, I am two pawns down, but his bishop will have to spend some time, or he will have to play d4. I like this now. I, this is much better than last turn, the, than two moves ago. I'm definitely gonna keep fighting now. And rook d3 has just become even more tempting in some positions because there's rook at the end of the line. Of course, if my c pawn could disappear, if I could, for example, do something like this, which I cannot do now, but I could do this, then I'm the one attacking and I'm the one who's better. So my plan is rook e8, rook e6, queen d6, queen c5, uh, a4, a3, knight d3, bam, bam, bam. Okay, he'll have to give up a pawn with g6, I think. <clears throat> okay, he wants to play d4. Giving up a pawn. I feel I should be preventing that. With c5. Do I have to play c5? Because he's threatening d4. And after ed4, he wants to play e5 himself. He's defended the d3 square. I feel like that's too much counterplay. I'm just going to stop it. I don't want to allow d4 in any in any scenario. And also, what this does, what c5 does, it gives me ideas of rook e8, rook e6, and rook b6. And c3 
probably should not be played. Okay, now I'm continuing with my plan. Rook e8. How can he double attack the h pawn? He cannot. Am I hanging anything? No. Rook e8. Rook e6 or rook d6? Both could be good. And here. And then I start. I, I think I'm better here. I, I know that my evaluations are never correct, especially when I record games. But if somebody showed me this position, I would choose to play black. Maybe I'm wrong. And this, okay, this is move 23 after rook h8. When I finish the game, I'm going to turn on the engine and we are going to see who's better and try to figure it out. I would like to have black here. Maybe there's a way for white to prove his two pawn advantage, but. I don't know what white does. I have no idea what white does unless he gives up the g-pawn with g6. Unless he manages to double attack the h-pawn, which I, I don't see a way how to do that. Unless he plays queen f5 check, king b8 and queen h7, against which I can probably do nothing. And then if bishop h5, then rook h8 wins a piece. Okay, I'm just continuing with my plan. I, I'm not even going to think about it. My plan is pretty good. King b8, unpinning. King b8, unpinning, and now... Either rook b6 and h4 and a4 or a4 straight away. He still wants to play c3 d4. I'm going to start with a4 to see what he does. My rook is good, and I want to see whether it goes to a6 or b6. I don't want to commit it too early. Still, I, I want to be black here. I don't know about you guys, but I'm the one attacking. Why do these two pawns matter? I don't think they do. Maybe they do in the end game. If you trade off the pieces, then I resign. But and actually, I could just go rook h8, and his queen is trapped. And there is no way to free the queen unless he gives up material. So that's also an option. But. I don't care if the queen goes to h7. He can go to h7 and take on h, h, h5 and waste two moves if he wants to. I'm going to go a3. And if he plays b3, I'm going queen a5. And he has to play king a1 or c3. If c3, then I can take it. Yeah, I like my position. I don't see how he defends. I'm sorry... I apologize to my opponent in advance for maybe surviving a completely lost position. I played like an idiot in the opening and 95 was just a blunder. But I'm happy that as opposed to 90% of the time when I'm worse, I actually did manage to fight and find some ideas. Preventing a3 with a3 probably isn't a good idea because I have b5, b4. Yeah, I'm just going b5. I don't care. I just want to open the position up. 
and then I want to go uh, maybe rook to d6 but he has queen e5 so I need to be careful so maybe rook to e7 rook to d7 rook e7 rook d7 and then c4 is he really going to play d4 I don't believe that. b4 d4 bc bc rook b6 rook b2 rook b2 king b2 knight d3 check no i don't have knight d3 check but i can take i think this works i i, I don't know what i'm missing i don't think he has time for d4 he needs to do something about this he needs to take twice and then play d4 but then my pieces are coming in I mean, anybody could win this position, I think, because now both kings are going to be naked. But what I like about my position is that his queen is cut off. So for as long as my rook is blocking the queen from coming back into the game, I have better attacking chances. I mean, if he has two extra pawn and the queen that's offside and unable to come into play and we're both attacking, then probably has to favor me. Okay, now I need to play precisely. I mean, rook d4 has to be correct. I don't know. I don't know if it is correct, but I'm restricting more of his pieces. He will have to go rook c2, rook c1, but I can simply go rook e8, <coughs> defending everything, or rook e7. No, rook e8, because his queen is influencing the c8 square as well. So rook c2, queen b7. Rook c1, rook e8. Rook c7, queen b4. Rook to c8, check. Rook to c8, queen to c8. Ah! I could be getting mated. So maybe not queen to b7 or queen to b6 but instead queen to e7 or or queen to b6 or queen to b7 And then <clears throat> rook c2, rook d7.
Okay, so queen b7, rook d c2, rook to d7. And then he plays d4. But then I have knight d3. Okay, I'm going to do that. And I want to play quickly. I don't think he has any alternative to rook dc2. Wait, rook dc2, queen b5, rook c8, <coughs> king a7, uh, queen f7, rook e7, rook c7, rook c7, rook c7, yeah, okay. I cannot do that. I cannot take on b4. <clears throat> but I could play rook e7 instead of rook d7. So rook dc2, rook e7, rook c8, king a7. He doesn't have rook c7 because I can take it twice. He has rook to c5, that's interesting. And if I play rook takes b4, he plays rook a5 check. I don't get this. I don't get that. Can I just take knight d3? I don't see why not. I'm going to take knight d3 because I don't want to waste too much time. Knight d3, bishop h4, knight c1, bishop f7. He cannot do that because the rook on d2 is hanging. Okay, I, I think I can go for this. Because this is not about attacking the rook, it's about preventing rook dc2. This is all I want to prevent, counterplay on the, ah, counterplay on the c file. If he plays rook cd1, I play queen b5. And if queen f7, uh, rook b6. Or even knight b knight b two knight b two is winning there. <clears throat> Rook d one queen b five. Uh, queen f seven knight b two. If Rook b two uh, Rook d one check wins. And if uh, Rook d four knight d one wins. This is probably the most interesting game I played on the channel. The most interesting training game. At least for me.
Wow, he did this. I'm going queen b5. I'm not even double checking. I should have double checked. But I think I'm fine. Because if bishop takes, <clears throat> then rook takes. If rook takes, queen b2 mate. What the hell is this position now? If he takes on h5, for example, my threat is a2. Oh, this seems like a puzzle position. There has to be something here. Queen a2 would be a blunder, because if queen a2, then rook d2, rook d2, and queen f1. What? Uh, I don't know. I think this is... I think I'm just winning now. I think he resigns because my queen is cutting off his king. Everything else leads to mate. Because my queen is second in line. King a2 leads to mate. King a1 leads to mate. Yeah, it's over. I don't believe it. I did it. Yes. I don't think he has a move. I mean, he has no moves. This is checkmate. <laughs> Okay, double checking. Rook b1, rook b1, queen b1. Mate. And rook b1, king a2. Rook d1, rook d1, queen b2 mate. Okay, it works. He doesn't have a rook d8 check. He has queen f8 check, but I can go king a7. <laughs> okay. Is this the final check? I think it is. This is the final check. It has to be. I apologize to my opponent. I don't believe I did this. This is 
I normally I never do this. Yes. Okay, let's analyze the position. Okay. Uh, five blunders from my opponent, four blunders from me. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just reading the chat. Okay, let's just have a look at the opening. So, Bishop B4, yeah, I remembered. Okay, I should have played it. I should have played this. So, I'm gonna turn on the engine so that you can see. So I wanted to do this, but I wasn't sure about queen or not queen e3, queen g3, and then something. Let let's say queen a5, and let's say no. Oh, okay, ah, let's defend something and let's play a stupid move for black. And I was afraid of f4, and positions like this, when they happen, my center just gets destroyed. And eventually I'm going to have to play c5, or immediately I'm going to have to play c5. So I didn't want to do that. So I ended up playing a5, which I still think is a good practical decision. Yeah, this is just a blunder. My god. And then even bishop c3. Plus 7. My, the position is plus 7. And now the swindle starts. And now I'm feeling happier after e5. We said move 23 after rook h8. Okay, here I thought black was better. I really did. <clears throat> I mean... Okay, I, can you guys see the evaluation? Plus 2.4. I mean... I, I'm not sure. Okay, rook d2, and immediately the advantage is halved. Bam, bam, bam. Plus four? Wait, ah, okay, after he takes, he loses his advantage. A3 immediately. Wow, rook d4 plus four. Ah. So what happens on a3? He gives up the bishop. And if he takes, then I take over the c file or play queen c3. And somehow this should be a draw. Okay, this is going to be some forcing engine line, which I'm not going to understand. So I'm going to do that later. Wow. <laughs> this is still plus seven. This is still plus 7 after queen f7. Apparently I don't have anything. Ah, queen b5, queen b4 winning. Queen b4 winning because I'm double attacking the rook and he cannot take. Yeah, but now okay. Wait, what? Aha, I should have done it differently. I should have done it differently to make sure uh, he doesn't have any infiltration with the, with the rook. But why doesn't this work? Wait, I'm sorry. This is all zeros? If queen f8 check. And then king a7 and queen e7 check. I cannot hide. I cannot hide because he takes on a3. Okay. This game, I'm still happy about, not because of how I played, I didn't play well, but because I fought on. And I'm really happy that I fought on. Uh, thank you for watching guys i hope you got something from this madness at least at least some swindling ideas uh, stay tuned for more chess bye bye